Hey everyone, I hope you all are having a great day. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in a single semester for class. Now the title is a little misleading because I think this semester has been unusually heavy in reading assignments. My two majors in college are medicine, health, and society, which is kind of like public health, and cinema and media arts, i.e. our film major. So I don't usually have a ton of books to read for class in a single semester, but this semester it was a lot, relatively speaking. I'm sure the English majors out there are like, that's nothing. But yeah, I was carrying all my books back to the bookstore so that I could return them. And one of my friends was like, why are you carrying so many books? And I was like, what do you mean? This is how many books I had to read this semester. So although I haven't posted since the summer, which might indicate that I've done no reading this entire semester, that is just simply incorrect. I've done reading. It just has not been leisure reading. So I thought it would be fun to kind of get a little glimpse into what an academic semester is like and see all the books that I read for class. Read is a little bit generous of a term in some cases because they're definitely some books that I heavily skimmed, but let's get into it. So I'm going to go by class. This class is called Mental Illness Narratives or Mental Health Narratives. And basically we just read a lot of memoirs about different forms of mental illness. So the first book that we read for this class was An Unquiet Mind by Kay Jamison. This one was about Kay's experience with bipolar disorder. Then we read Wasted by Maria Hornbacher, and this was about an eating disorder. Then we read Willow Weep For Me by Mary Donkwa. This is about her experience with depression. And finally, we read The Man Who Couldn't Stop by David Adam, and this is about David Adam's experience with OCD. So those four memoirs were our required readings that we had to read. And then there was an optional reading, meaning we got to choose a book that we wanted to read from a list provided and I chose The Woman in the Window by A.J. Fenn because it was the only fiction book on the list. But yeah, it's definitely a book that we've all heard of and seen. It was really popular. It was like the biggest selling debut of 2018, I want to say. Let me talk about the memoirs first. I get so frustrated at poor writing or writing styles that aren't really suited to my taste. I should say that. It's not poor writing. It's just that I'm not a big fan of the writing style. And that was significantly the case in An Unquiet Mind and Wasted. And so I think I consequently rated them kind of low on Goodreads. And I feel really bad because it's not a rating of their experience. Obviously, you can't I don't know, how do you even rate memoirs, right? It's so deeply personal and so powerful and moving that people are sharing their stories like this, but I rated them from, I guess, like a, a literary standpoint. They're not the best written in my opinion. I wish that I could have been the editor for them or I wish that they had gone through the editor a couple more times in order to refine the memoirs. But then Willow Wheat for me was really, really beautifully written. I think it was super poetic, so I enjoyed that a lot more. It was really, really moving. I really enjoyed the intersectionality of it. It's the only book that we read in this class that was written by a person of color. And so it brought a much needed perspective in my opinion. And then finally we read David Adams' OCD memoir, which is less of a memoir and more of like an informational book. It's kind of written a little bit like a Malcolm Gladwell book where you use anecdotes in order to be like educational about a topic, if that makes sense. So yeah, those were the four memoirs that I read in Mental Illness Narratives. And then I got to read one fiction book, which was The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, which I gave one out of five stars on Goodreads because I really just could not stand that book. It was so paint by the numbers thriller. It felt so incredibly formulaic, so uh, dependent on really familiar thriller crutches without infusing any sort of originality. And then I looked further into it and I read that incredibly scathing, I guess, expose on A.J. Finn, the author. That's obviously a pen name. I don't remember his real name, but I think it was published by The New Yorker. If you haven't read it and you've read that book, you should read that expose. It is incredibly insightful. And then on top of that, there are the plagiarism claims. So really all in all, that's just not a book or an author that I want to touch in the future. Bad, bad vibes all around. Now I'm going to go to my favorite class of the semester, which is medicine and literature. What a good, good class. It was just so intentionally taught. I really, really loved the professor. Oh, just the pacing of the class was beautiful, beautiful, chef's kiss. He would only assign like 50 or 60 pages of reading per class period, which was such a nice breather from the other classes I was taking, which was like, read a, a book a weekend. So we only read two full books in this class. The first one was Dirty Work by Larry Brown, which was really excellent. Super um, stylized, I guess. There's a lot of craft in the way that it was written. And something I really, really appreciate about medicine and literature is that the professor, he has an MFA, so he has such an investment in good writing and he wants his students to be really good writers. But also because of you know his investment in writing, he chooses good 
books for us to read. Like he, you can tell he loves the art just by the types of books that he chooses for us to read on the syllabus. So Larry Brown's Dirty Work, really, really gorgeous book. Even though I don't really like reading about wartime or veterans or anything like that, which is like a little offensive considering the professor is a veteran. Like even though it was not really aligned with my interests or my tastes, I still really, really loved that book because it was just extremely well executed and it's just so rich and full of depth and excellent book. And then we read Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward, which you know, has gotten a lot of acclaim in the literary fiction universe. But again, another excellent book full of craft and depth and gorgeous prose and so much, so much thought, really. So I enjoyed Professor Lindsay's class so much just because he loves writing and you can tell that by what readings he assigns, by what assignments he assigns. This feels like a Rate My Professor review, but I really enjoyed him, really enjoyed both of the books that he asked us to read. And yes, I just love when people choose good literature for us to read for class. It makes the class so much more enjoyable. Now let's get into the third class of assigned readings. It's called Literature into Film. Basically it's about book to movie adaptations. We read a book and then we watch the adaptation of it and we analyze both literature and film. So really it should have been my favorite class of the semester. It turns out it was one of my least favorite classes I've ever taken in college. It sucked really bad. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm done with that class. I'm sorry, but if it's 2019 and your syllabus is all old dead white people and you're just out here praising the literary canon without ever questioning why we're learning what we're learning, that's not for me. That's not a class for me. I'm not interested in it at all. But there's not going to be some element of criticism in a class in which you are reading strictly the literary canon. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't get it. Honestly, the class started off good and then it just kind of increasingly fell from there. But the first book that we read was Emma by Jane Austen. I've only ever read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and I love that book so much. Um, so I was really excited to read Emma. I don't think Emma's as good. I don't think the social commentary in the book is as strong. I don't think the characters are as developed. And I don't think that the way the plot lines all end in Emma makes as much sense as, you know, the counterparts in Pride and Prejudice. The next book that we read was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I've never read Frankenstein before. It just like completely missed my high school syllabus, I guess. Surprisingly enjoyable. The idea of Frankenstein's creature so different than what is portrayed in like pop culture so that was a really big surprise for me if you're at all interested in it I would recommend it it was a fun time the next book that we read was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens I've never read A Christmas Carol I've seen tons of adaptations of it and it was fine it was definitely the most I think tolerable Dickens piece I've ever read I was surprised at how easily digestible it was but I think maybe that's also in part because I have consumed that story in so many different versions before the next book we read was Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad and for this class, I heavily skimmed maybe half of it. So I can't review this book, considering I didn't really read it. My opinion on this book is that you should read it only if you're actually interested in reading it. If you're forcing somebody to read it, they're not going to glean from it what should be gleaned. Maybe I will revisit Heart of Darkness when I feel compelled to read it, but I do not feel compelled to read it. The way we discussed it in class was very frustrating. All arguments of racism were completely exonerated. We read an essay by Chinua Achebe accusing Joseph Conrad of being racist, and the only reason we read it was to debunk Chinua Achebe's argument. And so it just felt super, super off color the entire time we were discussing it in class. And maybe in the future, I'll, I'll have to read it on my own and see my thoughts on it. But as of now, I'm really supremely uninterested in reading it. So if you're a Joseph Conrad fan, you know, sorry to this man. And then finally, reread perhaps the pinnacle of the literary canon. And that is Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Did I read this in high school? Yes. Did I reread it for this class? Yes. I really don't have that much beef with Shakespeare. I think it's fine. I think Romeo and Juliet's a fine play. I would expect a 3000 level English course in university to be a little bit more critical or a little bit more engaging or a little bit you know more advanced in the way we discuss any of the books that we read but truly it was all so banal which was really unfortunate I had to restart my camera so sorry if the angle changed let's just say that if I were teaching a class called literature into film it would have looked a lot different so yes those are all the books that I read or pseudo read during this past semester I considered it to be a lot especially considering on average I read maybe like one book every three months although now that I'm thinking about it I did read um, one of Casey West's books one about the floral arrangement girl who wants to be a designer I can't remember the name all of her books blur together and then I also read on audiobook uh, far from the tree by Robin Benway which was surprisingly really really enjoyable and I think I might have cried listening to it like I thought it was moving. But yeah, that's a little insight into all the things that I read in a single semester at college. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll have a fantastic day and happy reading. Bye.
Oh yeah, and in case you were curious, the other two classes I was taking this semester were anatomy and an AADS, African American Diaspora Studies class, called The African City, and neither of those classes had required books that we had to read, so. Hello? Sophia. Yes? Sophia. Yeah, of course. Have a good day. Yes, we have Bye. <laughs> that was a call from my dentist. Okay. Uh, where were we?